Guys, I wanna first thank you so much for sticking with me on this channel. Um, I know I've been talking about the Tesla a lot, doing a lot of unboxings and not as much photography, but ultimately I am now kind of uploading every single day. So I'm uploading more videos than not. So the photography is still there. I'm just adding other videos. So if you guys are here uh, for photography, this is the video we're talking about today. And it's something we're talking about a lot as I'm doing more workshops and mentoring more photographers, especially through the COVID experience, through contracts, we have been talking a lot about pricing. I'm an a la carte photographer, but I also used to have packages. In fact, my weddings are packages. So I have packages in my weddings and a la carte photography packages or pricing in my uh, daily portraits. And I get a lot of questions on why would you do that? When do I need to do that? How do I do that? And so forth. So I wanna to talk to you guys the, the pros and cons of a la carte or packages in your pricing right now. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jeremy with Jeremy Lou Photography. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. Um, I'm kind of walking around outside. We are doing construction in the house right now. We're working on the master bathroom and the house is a mess. Construction's happening, noise is everywhere. And it's really hard to kind of get a moment to yourself. Um, but I just got off of a Zoom call with a photographer and we went through these very, very detailed options on their pricing, on her pricing, on how should she charge a la carte or packages. I gave her some options. I kind of guided her on what would be best for her. So hopefully it, uh, it works out for her. Uh, what is this? Weird. So guys, a la carte versus packages. So there's two ways of charging, right? And the most common way of charging for photographers is what we call package pricing, meaning that they have an A, B, or C. You can name it whatever they want. So from your packages, from there, what you can do is you can offer to a client, hey, I have an A, B, and C package. The C is gonna cost the most. You're gonna get the most stuff with it. The B is okay, but the B is actually what you wanna sell. And then the A is like, you really don't get anything with it. Um, and so the benefit of a package pricing, guys, is when somebody looks at your pricing and they see the packages, they know what they're gonna get. They know that, hey, if I buy A, B, or C, the small, medium, or large package, I'm gonna be getting that, I'm gonna focus on that shoot, that's what I want out of it. Um, typically, though, the bad thing about that is I will not purchase anything after. So if you're looking at making an additional income or additional money off of your current clients, it's very hard to do with package pricing. And that's the way I've kind of built my business on the opposite end, meaning that my clients don't know what they're gonna get until they get it, right? Yes, we know that they're gonna get some photographs. They know they're gonna go do a shoot with me, but it's not until they see the photos that they fall in love with my work. So they're also more opt um, or it's harder for a client to actually book you based off of your packages because they, maybe they haven't worked with you before and they don't know what they're gonna get. How scary is it to walk into a place knowing that you have a non-refundable payment? I'm gonna pay $500 to get this product, but I don't know what the product's gonna look like. Yes, I know that this product's gonna look great because I've seen some, the work that they've done before, but how is it gonna work with me, with my family, with my headshots, with what, my whatever, right? But package of pricing is guaranteed pricing, guys. It's guaranteed money, meaning that if you have a, uh, an A package at $400 or $200 and then a B package at $600 and then the C package at $1,000, whatever they pick, they are gonna be paying for that and you're gonna be making that money. So it's guaranteed money and it's not a bad thing. Package pricing is perfect for the photographer that doesn't know or want to sell. Basically, if somebody says, hey, you're a photographer, can I get your rates? You send them the packages, you charge them the amount, you do that, you provide the service that you provide them, you give them everything in that package, and you're done. You don't have to worry about selling, you don't have to worry about upselling, downselling, anything like that, you are done. But if you're an entrepreneur like me, you're not settled that way. I've built my business on not fishing for a whole bunch of clients, but using the clients that I have to sell on top of what they need. Uh, meaning that if you are at a server at a restaurant and you know that you have a four table section, your job is to make the most out of that four table section rather than asking for 10 table section. So if I have a four table section, they come, if I can build that checkup as much as I can, I'm gonna be making a ton of tips off of it. But if I have a 10 table section, I know that I can just rock as fast as I can and make a little bit of money, but not have to worry about it. Hopefully the analogy makes sense. So guys, I'm an a la carte photographer, meaning that uh, 
not packages, meaning that I have a session fee of a charge, right? Mine's $95. I charge $95 for an hour shoot. Everything then goes onto an online gallery or in-person sales. As of late during COVID, it's been online because we can't meet with people in public. They get to go onto that gallery and they can buy what they want. The only way that this works positively for you as a photographer is if your work is amazing and it will speak for itself. If your client goes into that gallery and goes, oh my God, I love all these photos, they start buying the photos. You can charge digitally, you can charge per print, per photo. And what happens is say they love 20 of your digitals and you're charging them 30 to $50 a piece, you're gonna be making quite a bit of money. And the cool thing with the client is a client is actually gonna be happier doing this because they are seeing the final product. They are seeing that, oh my God, I love 20 these images, they're $30 each, I'm about to spend $600, but I love this product. And who's to say they're not gonna spend more on top of that? If you did it with a package, you'd limit on what you can give them. And let's be honest, most packages from photographers are all or nothing, right? I will charge you $400 and you will do an hour shoot with me and you'll get all the digitals and ultimately the client has less value in that. If I sent you a gallery and you're buying what you want, you're gonna take more time and everything that you do buy that comes to you, it's gonna add a little bit more value because you picked, chose, and purchased that on top of it. It allows me to take the client that maybe would have spent $500 with you as a package photographer, they're spending an average of $1,000 to $1,500 with me. Last year my ticket price, ticket price for all portraits was $1,253. My weddings, um, which are package prices, where I charge between $4,000 and $5,500 with an option to purchase more things after, was about $8,400. Guys, I couldn't have done that if I just had package pricing. I'm not telling you which way to go, but I would say maybe if you are a photographer starting off, package pricing might be the way to go. As you build your craft, as clients start to love and ooh and ah, and you really can't do any wrong in your portraits, then you really need to start thinking about a la carte pricing. A la carte pricing, for example, is best for headshots, right? When we're doing headshots, they come in, they do a session with me, 50 to $95 for the session, and then they're buying two or three headshots. The session maybe only takes me about 30 minutes to do, editing maybe takes me about 30 minutes to do after on selected images, usually it's like five, five minutes per image, and then I get to keep that money. A family session, I get to render a lot. And when I shoot family sessions, in my mind, I know that the more that I can shoot, the more that I can show them in their gallery, the more money I make, right? So when I'm shooting a family session, I'm not just shooting the family as a whole. Say we have a mother, father, uh, daughter, and son. I'm shooting the four total, just the kids together, just the parents together, individuals of all four, running, walking, different locations. The more that I can render, the more that I can shoot, the more opportunities I have to sell. So if you're a photographer like me who over edits and over shoots or over delivers and proofs, maybe I show them 250 when you're used to showing them 50, I have more chances of selling more on top of it and it doesn't mean that I am uh, doing more work or less work for them because we all know the whole game on, on if you deliver, let, deliver more photos to your clients, you're doing an injustice to them, this whole debate and argument, I don't care. The more that I can show my clients, the more that they have in their gallery, the more opportunities I will have to make more money and in turn, it's made my business very, very successful. If you guys wanna get more into this, please let me know, I'm happy to go into detail on a fully a la carte or fully packaged, but basically you have to figure out if you're an a la carte or a package photographer. Again, package photographer, you don't have to sell, you don't have to upsell, you don't have to do anything. A la carte photographer, your work has to be there, but you have an opportunity to upsell and you have an opportunity to make way more money than you should be. Hope you guys are having a good day. I will talk to you next time.